Welcome back to my channel, Blessed and Highly Flavored. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm excited about today, just like I'm excited about any other day because I get to be in the kitchen, I get to do what I love, and then I get to taste it and enjoy it. And I hope you all do the same. Today, I'm going to be making an eggplant lasagna. And the reason I'm excited about this eggplant lasagna is because if you live in a house divided like I do, with vegetarians, pescatarians, and meat eaters, this eggplant lasagna is perfect because although it's vegetarian, it's so flavorful and savory and cheesy and delicious, your meat lovers are going to love it too. So I'm going to make an eggplant lasagna today for you as well as coupling it with a nice little simple Caesar side salad. Feel free to make garlic bread or whatever else you would like to go along with it, but I'm going to make the eggplant lasagna. It's going to be amazing. I'm going to show you how to roast your eggplant how to season it, how to draw the bitterness out of it, um, how to assemble your lasagna, and how to get it all done up. So that's what we'll be working on today. Like I said, I'm excited because, I mean, it's food. Who wouldn't be excited? But I really do thank you for joining me today. Um, I did return back to work on yesterday just to kind of give it a trial run. That was interesting. It was quiet. Um, it was only a few employees at a time, so it was really quiet, um, really sanitary. It was, it was like I said, a trial run. So that went well. But I just kind of, I still have a lot of concerns about the economy being open back up. So I'm taking everything slow, baby steps, and I hope you all are doing the same. Please feel free to comment below on your thoughts and ideas, not only about recipes, but um, your thoughts and ideas of what's going on during these uncertain times. I would welcome your comments. I would love to see what you think, how you are dealing with um, this pandemic and how you're coping with it. How's your life going, your work schedule? How are you eating during these times? What are you preparing? Share some of that information with me. I'll be super excited. You can share it with me in the comment sections below, or you can share it with me on my Instagram, which is blessed underscore highly underscore flavored 01. So that's my um, Instagram name. So please feel free, like I said, share your opinions with me. I'm here. I want to hear them. But for today's video, we're going to try to keep it very simple, which like I said, is lasagna. I'm going to show you how to spruce up a jar of marinara sauce or pasta sauce or whatever kind of sauce you use to make it a uh, thick and rich and delicious because they come out a little watery in my taste but i'm going to show you how to just thicken them up in a small window of time before you assemble your lasagna usually when i make my pasta sauce or my spaghetti sauce when i'm really being elaborate i'll cook it for six hours i'll make it from scratch and it's amazing, but you can do the same with the jar sauce. So I'm going to show you how to do that too. And I know I'm jumping all over the place, food to work, to pandemic, to this, to that. But like I said, I'm just excited about this video. So I want to go ahead and get started. Um, please, please, please share, subscribe, like, and turn on your notifications. But especially, do not be stingy. Please share my YouTube videos, share my Instagram page, share these tips and recipes with people that you know and love, people you meet on the street. No, not people you meet on the street, but associates and people that you know that are interested in food and trying new recipes because that's what I'm here for. I want to start a wonderful cycle of sharing quick tips and fun and savory and flavorful um, dinner ideas, lunch ideas, just food in general. It's a passion of mine, so I want to share it with you. I want you to share it with others. But without any further ado, let's get started. The first thing I want to do today for this video is go ahead and get my sauce on. Um, I have a Bertoli rustic cut, so it's a little thicker sauce anyway, but I'm going to thicken it up just a bit more. Um, Usually, I may do a ragu, I may do a prego. It just depends on what they have on sale in my local grocery store or what I'm interested in trying. But this one's a rustic cut, so it's going to have hearty vegetables in it, um, 
fresh garlic and onions so that's amazing within itself but to take it to another level um of extra delicious and flavorfulness yeah is that a word yeah flavorfulness <laughs> i'm going to add a teaspoon i'm sorry half a teaspoon of crushed red pepper i'm going to add a teaspoon of garlic powder i'm going to add um a tablespoon of italian seasoning and then this is the the real kicker um i like my sauce to be really thick like i said but also i like it to have a hint of sweet so i put some sugar in here just to cut the acidity of the tomato so i'm going to do about two tablespoons of sugar i know it seems like a lot but if it's a lot you can cut it with a little water and then simmer it down some more if it's too much for your taste because i would recommend doing all of this to taste but I'm going to go ahead and mix everything in. So like I said, I just took some Burt's Holy rusted cut pasta sauce marinara. I added a few extra spices to it and I'm just gonna turn it on to a medium heat until it kind of starts to bubble. It's, it gets kind of messy. My beautiful black backsplash always gets dirty. But um, it's a price that I'm willing to pay because I want it to simmer and I want it to simmer without a top on. So therefore it will thicken. If you put a top on, it seems to create more, more moisture instead of kind of concentrating and evaporating. So that's the goal here to thicken up the sauce. We need it to kind of evaporate some of the moisture off. So I'm gonna let it go on medium until it starts to kind of splatter. Then I'll turn it down to like a medium low and I'll let it just kind of thicken and cook while we prepare our eggplant lasagna. The next thing I want to show you is how to cut your eggplant. Your eggplant is going to act as noodles in this lasagna. So you want to make sure you cut it to about a three quarters of an inch thick. So you're going to cut off the top, of course. The bottom is fine to stay. Um, of course, you will wash your eggplant when you purchase it dry it. I purchased it from the store yesterday. I washed it, refrigerated it. But anyway, three quarters of an inch thick. So that's a little under an inch, um, which can be tricky. If need be, pull out a ruler, put some score marks on it with, well, yeah, score it with a knife with a ruler and that should be fine. But I'm just going to go for three quarters of an inch straight down like so and here you have it that's the eggplant i'm going to go ahead and finish cutting the rest of the eggplant so we can salt it and go ahead and start drawing out some of the bitterness as i mentioned earlier to uh, draw out the bitterness of eggplant because it is slightly bitter you're going to just need to sprinkle each piece of eggplant with just a little salt and allow it to sit for about uh, 20 minutes and then you'll see moisture or like a water start to bead up out of the eggplant and then you would proceed to towel dry that moisture off and um, then I wouldn't recommend seasoning your eggplant with any more salt but definitely some pepper um, before you roast it so as you can see I have two plant pans of eggplant here I use I had one large one, one medium sized one. Um, cut them all three quarters of an inch thick. Try to keep your cuts as consistent as possible so that they will roast up evenly. I'm just turning it to the other side. Well, that side's not necessary. Turn it to the other side so I can dry for bitterness on this side as well. And then um, after 20 minutes, we'll be able to season it and get it in the oven to roast it. Here I am just finishing up slicing about 16 ounces of mushrooms and then I'm going to saute them. The mushrooms are going to add a nice meaty flavor and meaty texture to this dish without including meat. So that's why I say even the meat lovers are going to love it because they're still going to get that meatiness from the mushrooms. So I have about 16 ounces here that I just sliced up, cleaned the mushrooms. Some of them I took the stems off, some of them I left the stems on. It's totally up to you. But I sliced them up. I have a medium heat um, I have my jumbo cooker over a medium heat. 
I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil right into the pan. I'm gonna allow it to heat up and I'm gonna saute my mushrooms until they're tender and then I'm gonna season them and we'll add our spinach for our ricotta mixture. Back here, my sauce has a nice simmer going. If it seems to be too low and it's not simmering quite, because I have it on medium low, turn it up back to medium where it's kind of slashing. I know you have to do a little cleanup later, but you definitely want to create enough heat where the moisture will evaporate off of that. So, right into this jumbo cooker, with a tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil, I'm going to add our 16 ounces of mushroom. And like I said, I'm gonna allow them to cook for about seven minutes or so until they are tender and they've cooked down some and then we'll season them and add the spinach for our ricotta mixture. So this is the eggplant after about 15 to 20 minutes or so. I'm trying to get a close up shot so you can see that moisture that's dripping off. That's some of the bitterness of the eggplant that has been extracted using the salt. I have preheated my oven to 400 degrees for roasting my eggplant, but I wanna get the additional salt off because I don't want this dish to come out too salty. Like I said, you're just gonna simply take a paper towel and just wipe off the additional moisture that came out of the eggplant and then we'll be ready to season them so we can get them in the oven to roast. I now have all of my eggplant nice and dry, as you can see. Make sure that you dry both sides with your paper towel. And like I said, I'm just gonna season it. I don't wanna add any more sodium because some did kind of soak into the eggplant. I've made this dish before and seasoned the eggplant again and it came out just a tad bit salty. So we wanna avoid that by not adding any more salt, but I will add some pepper. So I'm gonna just lightly season each eggplant with about a nice little sprinkle of pepper, a uh, quarter of a teaspoon per eggplant. But it's really just making sure you get your nice little sprinkle on top. That's why I did not pull out my measuring spoons because I kinda of just wanna sprinkle it evenly on top, flip it over and sprinkle the other side with pepper. And then after you get them seasoned, you're gonna just slide them into the oven at a 400 degree, in a 400 degree oven um, for about 20 to 25 minutes until they roast up and kind of stiffen up and they're not mushy because they are going to be our noodle in this eggplant lasagna. Here are my sauteed mushrooms. Like I said, I sliced them, put them in here, let them cook for about seven minutes or so. Kind of gonna just create a little well in the middle. I'm going to add a half a tablespoon of minced garlic, which is approximately three cloves of garlic, garlic cloves, three cloves of garlic, yay, um, minced up. And then I'm gonna season my mushrooms with a little Creole seasoning. That was a half a teaspoon of that. The Creole seasoning is also what I used in my sauce earlier. After adding the sugar, I did add some Creole seasoning as well. I'm also gonna use a half a teaspoon of oregano. And I'm just gonna mix everything in and allow it to cook for about two minutes more so that my garlic can cook a little bit. And then I think what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna add the mushrooms to my sauce to make it meaty. And then I'm gonna add the spinach to my ricotta so i'm gonna go ahead and let these cook for just a moment more and i want to taste my sauce before i add my mushrooms because i want to make sure that it's concentrated enough for this dish that i'm trying to make so i'm going to allow these to cook for about two minutes more and then we can check our sauce and add the mushrooms to the sauce now i want to go ahead and make my ricotta mixture that i'm going to use as a layer in my eggplant lasagna i'm going to start with just 15 ounces of ricotta cheese. Um, that one's with whole milk. So I would prefer the whole milk one, but whichever you prefer, like I said, it's perfectly fine. My mushrooms have been turned off. My sauce is still thickening just a little bit. I'll add my mushrooms in a moment and then I'll allow it to continue to kind of cook. But for now, for the ricotta mixture, we're just gonna do a 15 ounces of ricotta. 
we're gonna add a quarter of a cup of braided parmesan yes just like craft braided parmesan cheese we're gonna add that right in one large egg right into our bowl kind of mix that in and then i want to add a quarter of a teaspoon of black pepper and about a quarter of a teaspoon of salt I'm just going to give that a mix so everything is kind of incorporated. So in here is the ricotta, the parmesan, the salt, and the pepper. Now I'm going to add 10 ounces of salt, frozen spinach. So it's chopped spinach found in the freezer section. I allowed it to thaw. If you don't have enough time and you forget to allow your spinach to thaw, just pop it in the microwave for about three minutes till it thaws. Not really get hot, but because it's still... A little ice on mine. Not really hot, but thawed enough where you can break it up into your ricotta mixture. So I'm going to add 10 ounces of thawed chopped spinach right into the mixture. And like I said, this is just going to be one of the layers for the eggplant lasagna. So there'll be a sauce layer, a ricotta layer. And of course, a Parmesan layer. And then you can't forget the eggplant, which is acting, I'm sorry, yeah, the eggplant, which is acting as our noodle. And then of course, I would have to top it with a little mozzarella. So that's gonna be pretty amazing. But for now, this is what it looks like. The spinach is gonna sneak in a little extra nutrients and you won't even know that it's there for the people who don't like spinach. You can just kind of slide it in, especially for kids who think they don't like spinach anyway. This is the way you can sneak in a little extra nutrients by just adding the spinach straight to your ricotta mixture. Our sauce has thickened up quite nicely. Has a nice simmer going. Got a little pasta sauce all over the stove top. So yeah, that's a mess that you're gonna have to clean up, but it's definitely worth it. I'm gonna give it a mix, scrape down my sides, and then my 16 ounces of mushrooms that I've sauteed, I'm gonna add it directly into the sauce, like so. Make sure you get all your garlic bits and all the deliciousness at the bottom of the pan. I'm gonna mix it in, and like I said, I'm going to allow it to cook longer and thicken up some more. But now it's a nice, meaty, thick texture. So we're gonna allow it to cook for just a moment more. The sauce kind of cooks during the duration of roasting your eggplants and making your ricotta mixture. Your sauce just kind of gets to hang out on the back eye and really get nice and concentrated and delicious. Um, my eggplant has been in the oven for about 10 minutes or so. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn them to the other side to ensure that it's roasting evenly. This is what one side of my eggplant looks like after allowing it to roast for about 10 to 12 minutes. On one side, I'm gonna slide it back in the oven for another 10 to 12 minutes. I kinda wanna utilize the bottom racks for the second, third, bottom half of the oven so it can be close enough to the heat to roast, but it will not burn. So another 12 minutes on our eggplant and they should be roasted up just nicely. I want to now show you how we are going to assemble our eggplant lasagna. So here I have our roasted eggplant. This is perfectly roasted. If yours still seems a little moist or it didn't quite get brown like this, I would recommend allowing it to roast for an additional five to 10 minutes until you get a nice piece of eggplant that's roasted up like this. Um, or if some of your pieces came out inconsistently and a little, that some of them are a little thicker, then yes, definitely roast it a little longer. But I want to start by adding some of my mushroom marinara right to the bottom. I'm going to use my Pioneer Woman's bakeware, but traditionally for lasagna, I would definitely recommend using a, a 13 by 11 pan or something that's a larger size. But for presentation purposes, I am going to be using my bakeware by the Pioneer Woman. 
So it's gonna make a slightly smaller one, but I'll just have enough to make another one. So I'm gonna put a layer of the marinara first, and then I'm gonna add a layer of the eggplant, like so, just to kind of get everything nice and covered. Then since I'm gonna be making two of these, I'm going to use half of this ricotta mixture. If you're making one of these in the 13 by um, 11 inch pan or a bigger pan, a much bigger pan than this, um, or 11 by 13, however, I would recommend going ahead and dumping all of your ricotta mixture in. But like I said, this is gonna be a smaller one, so I'm gonna use about half of this mixture. Give it a nice spread. So I'm going layer by layer so you can see. And then of course we need another noodle layer or eggplant. So I'm gonna add another layer of eggplant like so. And I'm gonna add some more of my marinara. Now this would be my final layer. So once again, if you are preparing this in a larger pan, you would go ahead and just finish off the rest of your marinara in here so that all of your ingredients have been put in the large pan. But I'm just going to add just a little bit to the top of this just to cover everything. And then, of course, I'm going to add some mozzarella right to the top. So about a cup of mozzarella, because I love mozzarella. So I'm going to add about a cup or so of that, maybe a little over a cup. And then I'm going to add some grated Parmesan. I'm adding about um, an eighth of a cup of grated Parmesan right to the top. I'm going to slide this into my 400 degree oven for about 20 to 25 minutes until the cheese is nice and bubbly. And then we'll top it off with some of our fresh herbs after we let it cool. So here is our lasagna. Our edges have crisped up just nicely. Our cheese is nice and melty and melty and delicious and cheesy and wonderful. So I'm gonna sit it right here on my cutting board. I went ahead and chop up some fresh basil so i'm gonna just put some fresh basil right on top about a tablespoon of fresh basil is really per your preference um the fresh basil is optional but i would also recommend it and a little fresh basil right on top of that so like i said it's about i'm gonna add about a tablespoon to two tablespoons i just bought some basil from the store ran my knife through it and ch chopped it up. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to be serving this dish with a Caesar salad. So here I have some hearts of romaine that I washed. Um, I did buy the bag of pre-cut. I just washed it. And then I also added a little spring mix because I like spring mix in my salad. So I have that here. So I'm going to throw in all of my ingredients for a Caesar salad. Caesar salads are super easy to make um, if it's just going to be a basic sim simple and basic Caesar salad uh, I would start by adding just of course some creamy Caesar dressing give it a toss you don't want to drown the salad in dressing you just kind of want to coat the lettuce with the Caesar dressing so that's what I'm doing here. Make sure it's coated like so. And then I'm gonna add some shaved Parmesan cheese. I love Parmesan cheese. I like extra Parmesan cheese in my Caesar salad. So I'm gonna put a little extra in there. And then I have some black pepper here. I'm just going to ground some fresh black pepper right on top. Of course, you don't have to add the black pepper. That is solely to taste 
but I like a little fresh ground black pepper right into my Caesar salad. As you can see, I like a lot of fresh ground pepper in my Caesar salad. And then here I just have some butter and garlic croutons. Yes, they are store bought and they are still delicious. And it's about an ounce. Hmm. I'm just gonna put the rest of the bag in there. So I guess about half of a bag of the butter and garlic croutons, but like I said, they're solely up to you as well. Now that I have everything in there, I'm gonna give it a nice toss, like so. And there you have it, a quick and easy Caesar salad to serve on the side of your And lasagna. here we are. This is our eggplant lasagna. You can't quite see the layers as much as you can if you had a traditional noodle, but trust me, all the goodness and flavor is right in there. So there's that, as well as our Caesar salad that we prepared. And if it was up to me, I would serve it with a nice bottle of wine. Here I have a nice Cabernet. Um, you could also serve it with a Merlot, or if you prefer sweet red, you could do that, but I would definitely recommend serving it with a nice red wine. Uh, I want to thank you so much for joining me once again on Blessed and Highly Flavored. Uh, today we made eggplant lasagna, and I can't wait to dig in, but I do want to thank you so much for joining me. Please remember to subscribe to my channel, turn on your notifications, click the like button, and always, you can never forget, don't be stingy, share. So please share this video, and if you saw some other videos, or if you had a chance to see some of my other videos, please share those with some of your friends and family and acquaintances, so they can also take part and this wonderful thing I have going on here with some of my quick tips, like the pasta sauce that we made today, that we just spruced up and added a little extra flavor and really concentrated it. Um, I'm gonna provide my recommendations for that um, when you wanna jazz up a jar of pasta sauce, so I'll include that. But I do really, really, really wanna thank you for joining me. Uh, let's see, I wanna make sure I'm not forgetting anything. Oh yes, back to this, uh, quarantine situation. Uh, I know they're opening up the economy, but if you could please try to continue to practice social distancing. I know some of us are returning back to work, but please still be safe. Wear your mask, wear your gloves, wash your hands, use your hand sanitizer, uh, stay at least six feet apart. Um, for those of you who don't work in an environment where you can't stay six feet apart, please make sure that you are um, covering and taking other precautions um, and covering yourself. I want you to remember that you this is a chance for you to take care of yourselves, but not only yourselves, but also each other. So please remember to do so. Also, please join me back here for my next video. I like to do one every other day or so while I'm not currently working every day. So please join me back here in a couple days so you can see what I'm preparing next. But until then, have a great day.